Okay, hello guys. So, I'm going to run through some basic settings on how to get started with Freedye.uk. Now, we are available on just about all platforms. And the easiest way to get started is by opening Google Chrome. Highly recommend using Google Chrome. Radar seems to work best with that. Now, please bear with me because my computer is slow. So, what we're going to do first of all is open up Google Chrome. And I'm going to quite simply go to the website, freedar.uk. Okay, so this is the main website. Most things, well, just about all things, can be accessed from this page. So the first thing we're going to do is cover the basics on what everything does. So once you've come to the website, you can open the menu tab up here by simply clicking on it. So number one is the home page, which is the very first page that we've come to here. Radar login is purely how to access the web, uh, the web radar itself. Contact us is to send us a ticket for any inquiries. So it could be feed-in, complaints, or general support. Then we have our main shop, which you can buy goodies like glasses, uh, fridge magnets, mouse mats, etc., etc. Squawk codes, when you see an aircraft squawking a code, you can click on this and find out what that code means. Uh, I will cover that in a later video. MLAT setup, now this is for feeders who wish to send us different data other than ADSB. We use ADSB and MLAT, which identifies aircraft and everything else, which is pretty cool. ADSB coverage that will show you a couple of our feeders that have good range so you can get an idea of what um, range your receiver currently gets to. Our MLET coverage that just basically shows you a map with all the feeders on it which I will cover again. Live server status. Well, this basically means it will tell you if the server is online, offline, if we're experiencing any problems, which I highly recommend to go to first. So if you load your radar and nothing happens, or you get an error, it's always good to click on this to find out what's, what's what. The clothes shop is pretty much exactly what it says. We have a range of merchandise from hats to baby grills and everything in between which is pretty cool and that's basically it for the menu so we currently operate on Facebook Instagram and Twitter now these can be found by scrolling down just slightly and literally clicking on one of these links each link will take you to our each individual page so this one will take you to the Instagram page this one will take you to Twitter, and this one will take you to Facebook. Now, another little cool feature that we offer that at the moment no other radar site offers is as you just see, this little message come up. If you need any help, reply to this message. We are online, ready to help. So in order to use that, it's a really easy feature. Just simply click on this bar. Up pops some options. Now, uh, just simply select support, stick in a name, stick in your email, ask a question, and hit let's chat. And then that will put you onto another page where one of our support staff will then jump on and start talking to you to answer any questions that you may have. And that's basically it for the website. Uh, you can scroll down. And it'll give you a bit more information. So we track all types of aircraft from airliners to Cessnas all the way through to military. 
tells you a little bit about us. We're secure and reliable. Take measures to make sure your details can't be accessed by anybody else but ourselves. Which basically means if you're a feeder, your information comes to us and it goes nowhere else. We don't sell it on or use it anywhere else but within Freedar. How to support us, should you wish to. We are completely free of charge. But we do accept uh, donations, should you wish to. Which I'll show you in a minute how to do that. Sharing our data, which is exactly what I've just explained to you, it doesn't get sold on, it stays within us, unlike most radars out there that will actually sell your feeds and information to other other sites. Customer support just basically tells you the live support button, which again is this one down here. And then you can even ring us completely free of charge. And that will also go through to a support system, which is a pretty cool feature should nobody be around for the live support, which is very unusual. And this just shows you where we get our data from. There's three different feeds. We've got the UK feed, the MLAT feed and the world feed. So the UK will show you stuff from the UK only. MLAT will be wherever we have an MLAT um, feeder set up to. Um, the world feed is a combination of all these plus uh, we use ADSB hub which provides coverage of the United States which is a pretty cool feature. So we'll scroll down a bit more. Obviously I need to update this. I've been away on holiday so I need to get it updated. So we've got 2,839 members which is now 3,000 something. We've got 20 projects planned. Now to view this is quite easy. Just simply click on this link here and it will take you to the developers page. So, so far we've completed 30 of our list. And as you can see, quite a few cups of coffee has been drank since. Which is pretty cool. <clears throat> so, on this bit here, you can find us on all available app stores. If you struggle to find us, not a problem. You can come to the website, click here. It'll take you to Google Play for any Android systems. Click here, it'll take you to the Apple App Store for iOS. And if you have Amazon applications, you can click here to go to the Amazon Store. Now this is the donation picture. So as it says, even though your account is completely free of charge, if you would like to help us grow bigger and better, feel free to give us a donation. No PayPal account is required. Now the reason it says this is if you click on this picture here, it will take you to a PayPal payment screen, which is cool because it means your details are safe. We don't get your details. We just get your donation. So PayPal handle everything to do with that. And we are PayPal verified. And that is it for the website. So I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top. And now we shall cover the radar itself. Now, on mobile devices, so this covers PC and mobiles. On a PC, you'll get this menu button. On a mobile, you'll only get these lines. Now, it doesn't matter if you click the menu or the lines you'll still get the menu no matter what. So now we're going to go to the radar screen. Simply go into the menu and hit radar login. And once my computer decides to load, here we go. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing we have here is a map, which you can move around, zoom in, zoom out, whatever you like. Now on this side, we have all our aircraft, which you can scroll down, down on to tell you what it is, who it belongs to, 
registrations, call signs, and all the rest of the goodies. Now you can decide what this shows you, uh, which I will cover in a later video. So I am just gonna pick, let's pick a random. Let's pick DHL. So I've clicked on DHL and it's now found that aircraft. Now my computer's playing games, there we go. So here's the aircraft that we're currently watching. All the information from this box here now comes up into this box here. Now on a PC, this option here does not work. That is only for a mobile. And the reason it's only for a mobile is because a mobile screen layout is completely different which I shall try and cover in a later video and that would be called mobile only so yeah that's basically that one to close that box simply click the X now to zoom in and out you can use the plus or the minus or if you have a wheel on your mouse you can zoom in or out using that now to move around on the screen you simply click, hold, and drag wherever you want to go. It is literally as simple as that. Now, should you want to change some settings, all settings can be found in this menu tab here. The options, which you can change, and I'll go into more details on that on another video. Receivers, now this is where you change to which receiver you want to look at. So you simply click on it and this will take you to the MLAT feed, the UK feed or the world feed. And to change biome, you just simply click on whichever one you want to look at, which is pretty cool. So the shortcuts, you can change if you want your mouse to move or sorry, your screen to move which I don't currently have on. Range circles is pretty pointless. Uh, it doesn't really do much. It just gives you a load of circles on your map. Now uh, the pause button freezes everything you see. So if I was to click pause right now, there's 89 aircraft on the map. None of them will disappear and nothing new will appear. The icons won't move. Now this is really good if you've got a really slow computer because you can click on it, click off that, you can zoom out, that may be a bit too far for a minute, and no, none of these planes will move, they'll stay exactly where they are, which will allow you to find a particular aircraft, and that's pretty much it for that one. Now, I'm going to leave it paused for a minute. You guys can unpause it should you wish to. So, the other feature is list only visible. Now, what this will do, if I click on it, it will only show me these four planes here. And that's because that's all that's on the screen. So, if I click resume, there we go. Okay, one of them's dropped off. So it will only show you the planes you can see on your map now. So if I was to zoom out a little bit more, we've got a few more up here, 12 in total, 11 now. And this will update accordingly. Now this is also a good feature. I will force that option eventually. Um, it just makes loading times a lot quicker and easier for the people that don't have very good internet connections. So we'll run through some options here, menu options. So the first tab is the general. Uh, data feed, you can change your receiver from here. You can change how quickly in seconds that everything updates. Uh, hide aircraft not on the map, that just basically says what it is. Because what, what will happen is we'll have a receiver pick up an aircraft but it can't quite work out where it is or what it is 
so it will just put a white box and when you click on it it won't actually show the aircraft because the radar doesn't actually know where it is so current location now you might have noticed there's a blue dot on the map which I will show you right here now it's set into London by default uh, sadly there's nothing I can do about that I wish there was so in order to change it you go to menu options using general again tick both boxes and then simply close now you'll notice there's a pin now appeared now what that will let me do is currently click on it click and hold and now that will allow me to drag this wherever I like so I currently live in South End uh, just by the MLD station so I click on it move it and simply let go and then it moves that and your browser will remember exactly where you've put it now all this does is helps up here where it says distance which basically means this DHL aircraft that I've currently clicked on is 372 miles away from my location so that just helps sort of locate where an aircraft is rather than looking at somewhere going oh yeah that that's that's close to me that plane's coming this way you can actually move the pin and make it easier for you now that is also available on the mobile too and then once you've selected your location simply go to options untick the two boxes leave this one ticked and there you go it stays there you can't move it you can't drag it you can't do nothing so that's your location currently set I'll just quickly run through some more options here and I'll put it into other ones now the audio if your eyesight's not too good and we've got quite a few members that use this option you can click these two now what it'll do is rather than you trying to read what it is the air uh, the server will actually read it to you it'll tell you what it is type of aircraft and whereabouts it is it's a pretty cool feature but I don't tend to use it very much now the map you don't really need to worry about this these are all default settings uh, you don't need to change any of them unless you want to or select which basically means if you're watching an aircraft and it disappears off the screen and you have auto select ticked, it will automatically select another plane for you move your map around so if you're watching London and it decides to pick an aircraft up in France unfortunately you're gonna to go to France so as default I've unticked that one because there are quite a few people that weren't happy with it which is absolutely fine your aircraft tab now you can decide what labels are shown on the aircraft so if I find a random aircraft to show you uh, server's not playing ball aha there we go so I'm going to go over here and select this one now you'll see here it's give me the registration the call sign and the altitude now to change that simply go to options aircraft and now you can choose between one line or three lines and then you can choose from the drop down boxes in order what you want to look at so you could have air the pressure if you wanted to altitudes distance uh, model code operator code which receiver it's come from which doesn't actually work uh, the speed the squawk just whatever you want it on but I tend to use the registration the call sign and the altitude now the aircraft details 
you can change to anything you like these are just defaults and to do that you simply click on the padlock select from the drop down box whatever you want and once you've selected it hit add and it will appear down here so in order to change that you just simply click on it drag it wherever you want it while leave mine at the bottom and just let go now it's very important always click the padlock again and now that will lock it closed which is pretty cool so again this box here that we've just spoken about is for let me scroll back up anything you change there will change on this top box here so any settings that you put in will change here or add to here and the next box go back to aircraft is the aircraft information window now when you click on an aircraft you'll get a box that appears at the top now these are default settings again so should you wish to add anything same thing as above simply click on it click on what you want to add so we'll put let's just say i want to know if it's how many engines it got so i'll simply put that hit add engines have appeared down here so i want that underneath the operator flag i'm going to lock it into place i'm going to close this and then i'm going to come to the aircraft click on it and it tells me that engines it's a twin jet simple as that so i'm just going to go back on and remove that because it's not one that i tend to use now all the settings you'll look at when you first load it are completely default uh, these are set by myself on the server side so should you wish to change anything you can change it to suit your needs so we'll lock that off now the list is the bottom list at the bottom here where it shows you the aircraft now because I'm a military man I like military at the top of the list which I don't know if I can show you let's find out probably not going to show me any military aircraft at all oh yeah there we are so we've got a green C-17 which has appeared here in green now all military are green police are in blue and the Coast Guard is in orange which there doesn't appear to be any right now so as you can see the police and the C-17 are both at the top so I can click on the C-17 it will automatically highlight it here comes the box again that shows me the details for it and this little box over here will show me a picture now I can find out all sorts of different information by clicking on these different things up here which is pretty cool so I'll go back into options go back to list so I, I can choose what I want to display first now because I'm a military guy I click military now with this box if I tick the box military will appear at the bottom because it says civil and military now it does it in order if I tick the box the first option becomes available first so it will show me all the civil and the military at the bottom now obviously as I explained just now because I'm a military man I like purely to see military so I've unticked the box and that reverses the order so I now see the military first then the civil which is pretty cool now just like the other lists this list settings here are for the main aircraft box down here and to change them simply click on the padlock again 
add what you want in here so we'll go engines again hit add and I simply scroll that across to the top now as you can just see that's appeared down here engines the C17 has four and the rest are twins which is pretty cool but again that's not an option that I use but if you want to customize this to your own to help yourself any settings you change do not affect other people it's only purely for your device so I'm going to delete that one again filters is exactly what you can do now should I I'll only run through this quickly but I will do a dedicated video for the filters because there are a lot to them so as i said earlier i'm a military man so i want to see everything that's military and to do that you simply click on the box select military again you can select this to anything you want so i'm going to select military i'm going to hit add filter now that's appeared there and it's ticked but you can still see all these aircraft purely and simple enable filters everything will disappear and it will only show me what the radar claims is military so as you can see United States C-17 is military so therefore it shows in green and when you click on it it will go yellow but as soon as you click off it I'll just use the police one down here as you can see that's gone back green again and that's it that's the basics of the radar pretty easy thing to do uh, this just lets you customize what you see so I can have uh, I can have my screen like that if I want which takes the list from here and sticks it up to here uh, map at the top uh, just changes that round or I can have that with absolutely no map whatsoever and click on the menu and we'll just put that back to classic and there we go guys that is basically the basics on how to get started with Freedar. So if you have any questions, feel free to use the live support or ask on any of the groups, social media wise, anybody will come and help you out or simply send us a support ticket and we'll answer you as quick as we can. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Hope this has shared some light and i shall start recording other videos with a bit more in-depth explanations on what does what and how to do certain things so thanks again guys take care bye bye